Hi everyone, welcome back to the weekly Effectory webinar series. My name is Arjen Swank and I'm one of the consultants at Effectory. Together with my colleague Axel, we're hosting this webinar series of Effectory to dive deeper into the trends and developments in the HR world. At Effectory, we are the market leader for employee listening and feedback and very much involved in the field of HR and people development. Every other week, we invite inspiring guests to share with us the latest trends in HR and of course the business community around us. Maybe you've seen our previous recordings in our YouTube channel as well, talking about performance management, culture, purpose and perspective, employee experience, and last week about diversity and inclusion. Of course, everything focused on the world that we have around us with people with a business experience. All the recordings can be found on our Effectory YouTube channel, and also today's recording will be there from tomorrow onwards. Our guest today is involved in many different fields of HR. She helps scale-ups to professionalize and grow and reach their ambitious goals with a professional HR setup. She has a particular focus on people, culture, and teams, and she also invests as a business angel in HR tech. You might know her from her many publications, her radio program, her video interactions on a lot of different social channels. And her name is Wendy van Eerschot. And today, in 30 minutes, she will take us through the top five insights for effective talent management. What is it that leaders should do to retain, attract, and help develop talent? What is the best way to help talent develop and grow? How do you inspire talent? And how do you create a high-performing culture? Of course, you can continuously send us your questions and we'll try to answer all of them live in our Q&A. Wendy, I want to warmly welcome you to our Effectory webinar series. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. From what I've read, it is your personal mission to ensure people find purpose in their work, can achieve inspiring personal goals and keep developing themselves every day. All this in order to prevent war. Indeed. <laughs> Now, maybe you can shortly introduce yourself, but also shed some light on this last quote. Yeah, how to prevent war, which exactly. is most important. <laughs> First of all, of course, I have to talk about the elephant in the room. That is my glasses. I have a visual handicap, so that's why I'm wearing glasses. It might be a bit um, unusual in the beginning, but I'm assuring, assuring you that... Uh, over the course of the coming 25 minutes, you get used to these glasses. And uh, English is not my natural language because I'm Dutch, but I try to pronounce as good as possible. Um, to come back to what you said, Arjen, about um, talent and, and all the aspects that you mentioned, like having a good and uh, meaningful work um, and um, learning every day and how that could prevent war, is that I'm sure that if you are going to your work and you have a meaningful job, you learn every day, you learn how to give and receive feedback. Mm -hmm. You feel inspired that when you go home, you will not make war with your neighbor. You're not going to send, uh, you know, these critical messages all over the world to people that you even know, don't even know. So I really believe that if you feel that you belong to a team, that you experience camaraderie, if people take care of you, you will take care of others. And I think as HR, we could make the difference in our companies to make sure that that context is shaped. Wow. Now you're going to talk about talent management. Mm -hmm. um, before we dive into that specific presentation, maybe you can just, well, set the scene. How do you define talent? Yeah. And also, how do you define talent management? Yeah. So uh, talent, there are many different definitions. For me, talent is everyone is talented. Everyone has something that they can become really good at. And talent, I think it's very important that we uh, understand that it's our mirror, how we judge talent. So to give you an example, I had a colleague at Shell. She worked one level below the top level. And I thought she was really a great HR manager, mm -hmm. but she was not appointed to the top job. And she told me that one of the reasons was that she didn't have the experience in managing crisis. So they told her you need to have experience managing crisis mm -hmm. and you need to have experience with difficult relationships with governments in foreign countries. Now, she said, I've been sent on several jobs to to pick up that experience. Mm -hmm. But on the one hand or on in, in, in a certain way, I didn't get that experience and nobody 
understood that she didn't get that experience because she was so good in preventing crisis. So yes, she had no staff union union strike, but that's because she had good negotiation skills, that mm-hmm. she involved everyone, that she l- looked uh, as at different angles to the same problem. And other people judged like, okay, but you had it easy. You know, this was not a difficult case. Mm -hmm. So I think if we're talking about talent, it's very important that it is relatable to what kind of company you are, what you're looking for, what people can be very talented in one company and not so talented in the other one. Mm -hmm. So we attribute it now much to one person, to the individual, Mm -hmm. but I think it's a combination. And um, so giving one definition that you could say you know it's it's your skill or that it's something that comes easy to you and that if it comes easy and you practice a lot the 10,000 rule uh, that you then can be a master in a certain topic that's true but I think it's much broader than that so if we talk about talent it's actually a, a skill something natural that that applies to you as a person yeah but in the same instance or by definition we also talk about all the different talented people that we have in our organization. For me, it is. Because if I look at the organization, I come many times. I've, another example, I came with a, 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 a founder who had a, a scaling company. He wanted to hire only academics, mm-hmm. ac- academically sc- uh, schooled people. And uh, you must have at least a master degree. Mm-hmm. Well, he asked those people also to do administrative jobs. And I think... That that is, you know, you you saw a high turnover, of course, because mm-hmm. people after two years, they found the job was not interesting enough or challenging enough. So they left. And I think you have people that are really good in administrative parts. I have people in my company that are much better in that and that they even tell me when I want to implement something or change something like, OK, we, but we need, need to take this or that into account. Mm-hmm. And then I think... Yeah, that's really good. You're so good in this aspect of work. So um, we need to avoid being too tight in our definition on talent, I think. Well, good. Thank. I, I truly agree. So thank yeah. you very much for that. I, I'm very happy that you're going to and share also, your... And also another point, actually, sorry to, to continue, yeah, is also that... Uh, I imagine then in, in this, I don't want war in our, in our <laughs> lives. Um, I'm thinking about the people that then are suddenly are not talent. You know, yeah. so so uh, so if we're talking about talent management, the whole thing that I will talk to today, if I then imagine that you look to at this presentation, you think like maybe I'm not talent. How that feeling? I, that's not okay. Oh, it's horrible. I think, I'll, I'll I think share that's with you okay. an example. I, I think yeah. uh, you you notice, or at least you you you've observed the same. Where I was speaking with a business leader who said our talents are the people below thirties. Yeah. And I said, okay, but what about the people above 30s? Yeah. So all of a sudden he created a camp within his own company and also very much put that specific emphasis on everyone who was older in his perspective, yeah. who apparently didn't have any talent in the same instance. And, no. oh, wow. and, and of course, there is a sort of a difference. You know, you see people in your company that are really talented in the sense that you see them growing into real leadership positions. Yeah. And they need maybe other guidance than people that you don't see evolving mm-hmm. in that kind of role. But then still, for other people in other routes or, or career paths, mm-hmm. they also need to, to have attention to become really skilled in their job. Good point. I think yeah. it relates much to our purpose webinar. So that's great that you mentioned a little yeah. bridge to the recordings. If you are able to see that part of purpose, that yeah, a point where people can grow towards, that will definitely help them develop their skills and develop their talent yeah. as well, of course. We are learning animals, you know, and I, I believe, but it's more my personal view. Mm-hmm. I believe we are meaning making machines. Yeah. You know, like we cannot live without any meaning. It's very difficult to have the idea that I'm here on earth without any meaning, any, you know, it doesn't matter if any I do anything. Yeah. So, so we need to create also a sort of meaning for ourselves to really feel that we belong here. Yeah. And um, maybe we need to dive into the topic right now. Cool. No, <laughs> and I, 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 I think this is great. But yeah, yeah. please take us away also in, in sharing, okay, what can I do as a leader or in yeah. my position in HR to yeah. help? Yeah, my talent development and talent management. Yeah, so expect a lot of people that are listening now or or looking at us at the moment that they are in HR, that you are in HR, but there are maybe also many founders. If you're in HR, 
Uh, maybe it's good to see that we have the HR Tech Meetup and uh, HR Young Meetup, which are groups where we try to also uh, deliver new knowledge and share our experiences with each other. So I'm um, hopefully seeing you there once. Um, the first, I'm going to talk about five leadership insights, five things that are essential to understand around the topic of talent management. The first one is talent needs inspirational examples in the hierarchy. And I think this is something that is underestimated. So it's important that when I'm young and in the organization, but also if I'm already growing and I'm already a bit further in my career, that I see examples that are inspirational. And I think we often are not focused enough on what is inspirational and also in our programs to develop talent and also to focus on leadership. That uh, we focus a lot on the hard skills, on being good in scaling, in target setting, in vision making, in purpose, all important. But most importantly is that we feel that we can relate to these people, that they are straightforward, that they feel deep empathy, that they express love and appreciation. Maybe sound soft, it isn't. It's very difficult to do. And it's difficult to combine love and appreciation with being straightforward. So the whole presentation, I will tell you and explain that a lot of times in our field, we have to balance between two different ends of the stick and they're both even important. Other thing is also important that they believe in collective power and not in I as an individual, I'm the master here, I'm the best. And if you want to learn something from me, first of all, you need to uh, cheer me up and, and make, make sure that I, that I feel you know, appreciated by you. Then maybe I will share something with you. Uh, we need to have leaders that create a safe and challenging environment. And one exercise I would like to ask you is, if you now go uh, through your organization in your own mind, do you have these inspiring leaders? Is there someone popping up in your mind? And do you place them in direct contact with your talent that you want to develop in the same area? So if I'm talking about, for example, the expertise, so, so you have different career path. We have a leadership path. We have, um, how do you say that, expert paths most of the time in different organizations. In each of these paths, we have and we need inspirational leaders. Do you identify them only on their hard skills or do you also identify them about their personality? And I think the combination makes it strong. And it's also important for leaders to understand that they need to develop here. Empathy is something that you can train. And I think a lot of people think that is something you have or you have not. But believe me, people that are high scoring on empathy, they learned that in their family life. They had a training most of the time, 18 years in their families to become very empathetic. So maybe some people don't get it from their home family and they need to learn it in the company. It is something that you can train very important for people to have inspirational leaders. Second one, talent needs nurturing and stretching. Now, this is, of course, something we all know. Okay, we need stretching and nurturing. Good. Again, here, I have two sides. We have hard skills and we have soft skills. Now, improving yourself is something that you could say, the faster you improve in time compared to others, the better you become. I'm still, as a person now, still improving all the time. Now I'm learning again to, to be an inspirational speaker. I'm doing radio shows at the moment, making podcasts. I learn every time I listen back. I look at what can be done better. And also, I'm sure I look back to this webinar and I think, oh my God, this was not good. Or there I could have been more personal or here I should have looked better in the camera. And I learn again. And I believe that if I do that more than other people, in the end, I will become the best in my field in what I think is important. Now, that is hard skill. It's becoming the best in your field. It's goal setting and it's core competence training. But next to that, I feel personally that I need to train my persistence, awareness, growth mindset, empathy. 
I also go on personal development trainings. I'm going, for me, it works in uh, a tantra scene. Uh, it works in, in meditation. It works in totally different groups where nothing counts as it comes to career or my position in the social network that we are in, where it's the, where nobody is impressed with anything I've done in my career. And it helps me to feel again like, oh yeah, it's important that I develop myself as a person as well and that I'm relatable and that I, again, I don't believe in the fact that because of my position I am someone because I'm still the same without the position. So it's important also that in developing our talent management structure in a company, we are combining these and we pay both as much as attention. So go over for yourself and think like, how do I actually do that? How do I combine training myself, becoming another individual, growing and taking in feedback? How do I react to feedback? Do I feel personally attached to that? Do I feel offended when people tell me? Or am I able to see that if someone gives me feedback, that half of the feedback is, of course, their own mirror. It's what they project on me. But half of it, most of the time, have a core, has, has a core that is very valuable to follow up. What are you doing? Well, how is that for you? Are you thinking in these ways? And are you shaping the environment in your company in this direction? Well, can you explain to us maybe also a particular question from Ellen? What is a growth mindset? I think yeah. this relates Very to Very good question. Yeah. So uh, there is a lot. If you Google on growth mindset, you will find pictures with um, fixed mindset and growth growth mindset. Growth mindset, so this is out of the research, they say fixed mindsets are people that have a mindset that you are born with a certain skill. So you're born like you're, you're extrovert and you're good in technical, in, in math and in science, and you will uh, not be able to train yourself in being a good golfer if you don't have the skills as natural from the beginning. The growth mindset, on the other hand, is a mindset that you believe by training, you can become better. And research shown, and if you don't know the term, I will really encourage you to, to read the documentation about that. The growth mindset is about that you believe that you can grow and learn yourself everything you want to learn and that you will become better by it. And that it is not so much to do with your natural skill but more with your persistence and your encouragement to do it. And the more I believe that I can train myself, the more and the better I will became, become. So when I believe in a fixed mindset, I will less improve than if I believe in a growth mindset. So that's what I mean with that. Great. Thank Perfect. you for the question. Yeah, thanks. So we have now discussed, we need inspirational leaders. We need, of course, hard and soft skills development. But that's not all of it. And that is one of the most important things I think in HR. In my personal view, we are too much focused on this skill side and on leadership development. And of course, in what I've discussed up to now, there comes, you know, the job uh, profiles, the HR academies or the academies we develop for the, the companies that are all in what I've already discussed. But with that, also with your scorecards, that's not the whole story. So now it begins, how do you get your talent then even better? The third point I want to make is connecting the talent dots. So in Shell, for example, I was in the beginning when I started there, uh, we had a simple example, we had a reading uh, club. So, uh, and, and we made it, it, it was a, a sort of lecturing club and, and you could invite professors, but also high, highly uh, uh, placed managers from, uh, from the international organization to come to us, young people to, uh, to talk to us. Now, the committee to organize those readings, that was a group of very talented people from different as areas out of the country to get together to organize this reading secret. Now, I think that is an example on how you connect talent throughout the organization, maybe working on different places, 
together so that they see that there are also other people with the same ambition, the same aspiration. And also if you climb up the ladder, it's important that you know each other already a bit and that you can trust each other. And the most trust is built in the beginning of your careers when it's not so obvious who is in the hierarchy higher or lower. So it's very important to connect the dots between talent and to organize things in your organization that talent and, and that can be, if, if I'm talking about expert role models, you can, could form a group in that, but also in leadership talent, for example, and let them mingle with each other. It's important for further career advancement. But also get them connected with people outside your company. Help them to get a mentor outside the company to develop their skills or to have their questions. So open up a network and make sure that you build the networks of your employees. So for example, in my case, I now also try to connect my staff with other people outside the company to develop themselves and to get more and more experience and to build their own networks that is important to become the leaders that we need in my company. Fourth point, and that is throw them into the water. <laughs> it is a bit of a Dutch expression, so I'm not sure how that comes and feels for international staff. But for me, it is very important that you throw everyone into the water. Don't be the curling uh, leadership person or the curling mother making everything easy for them. You need to have heart, you know, find the walls, make your mistakes to develop yourself. Now, let them struggle, force them to be creative, inspire them to find solutions they thought were out of reach. Of course, keep an eye on them. I, I figure, you know, there. of course you keep an eye on them. But I had a boss when I started in Shell. He let me solve an issue that was already there for 10 years. Nobody had made a solution. I, was, I wasn't aware of the fact that this was a very, very difficult problem. It was about, actually, it was more in how people were relating to each other. And it was a sort of a war of power. Um, and, uh, and, and people in, in certain departments that w didn't want to work together or didn't want to agree amongst each other on a certain topic, I wasn't aware of that. I solved it just because of I was new and I was, I had no idea. I just had, I asked questions nobody asked anymore. And he said later to me that he thought I would never succeed. He thought I would, you know, I will, I will come back crying and saying, oh my God, I, I, I cannot solve this issue. He let me go. And of course he watched me. And suddenly, apparently timing was good. Something had to change. Maybe I said something, maybe it was the right timing. I don't know, but the issue was solved. So it's important to, to throw them into the water and think about how you can challenge them. So don't be too shy to promote people earlier than you that you think they can handle because if they are really talented they will figure it out and they will make a solution they will try to get people in they get themselves mentored and they will grow faster than you would have expected is there any other question that i need to ask to answer in between well there's an interesting part so we we talked about young talent or well yeah. let's say i mean it's sometimes tempting to relate to people earlier in their careers, maybe yeah. then later on. But yeah. It's good maybe to reference that if you talk about promoting somebody earlier than you might expect or yeah. earlier than, than maybe expected in the system, do you also mean that for people later on in their careers? For sure, yeah. Um, for example, I sometimes I had, I had it myself. Someone wanted to become the leader of a group mm -hmm. and I thought that might be not the right person with the right skills, but I saw persistence and and someone who really wanted to do this job. And I thought, yeah, you're right. You, you, you are entitled to getting this chance mm -hmm. and I should give it to you. And, 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 and he's doing much better than I expected. So um, I think we can do this all over again. And now for myself, for example, I, I, I structure my company as as in the Eckhart Winson uh, cell methodology. <laughs> so, uh, so you split up different uh, locations and they are really leading their own location. And I have 
only something to say about the direction of V people and also about the direction uh, and our strategy and marketing, but that's it. So um, I had to also reinvent myself mm -hmm. and I really felt thrown into the water myself. I needed to learn new skills again and I, I felt humble and I felt, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know anything about marketing. What do I need to do? And um, I try to do the same steps as, as what I would do when I was younger. Mm -hmm. So um, I think um, there's research shown that indeed when you grow older, that sometimes it takes a bit longer to learn a new skill. But as soon as you learned the new skill, you are more effective in implementing and using the new skill. Mm -hmm. So when you're younger, you learn faster the new skill, but you have a bit longer time you need to figure out how you will use the new skill in the situation. Mm -hmm. So if you combine those times from learning to implementation, younger and older people are not so much different. It's more that that we look at older people and think, okay, but you're almost, you know, you're 45, so you're not, you're not new anymore. And now I am in the age of 45, and I feel I'm still as vibrant as I was as when I was 28. Yeah. And I think this vibrancy keeps alive if you also challenge everyone in the company to become better mm -hmm. all the time. Cool. I think you're going to talk about high-performing culture, so yeah. how to create that now. Yeah. There's a bit of a question like, a lot of organizations focus on developing like a young professionals network and, and yeah. skill setting, um, trying to link those talents to inspirational leaders inside or outside speakers. But it's less focused on the group of 45 plus maybe and yeah. saying the old professional network or whatever. Yeah. But if I understand you well, it's not less necessary. It's just less common to do it. Uh, uh, for sure. And, and I, I think, actually, I believe you leave a lot of talent behind because those people also feel sometimes that they're not investing anymore in them mm -hmm. while they most of the time carry your organization. Yeah. They are the ones that making your product successful on the market. Yeah. So, and also, especially now in these times that so much is changing all the time, I figure, you know, do only the exercise with your management team. If you don't invest in those people for five years time, then in five years, you think they have a problem But it's actually the problem you have yourself created yeah. by leaving them sort of behind, by not saying like, okay, like, for example, we are investing highly in high HR tech. We are only thinking about how do we get the whole organization in movement of understanding HR technology and how that's changing our field. Mm -hmm. And not only with the younger people, because, of course, the younger people will pick it up anyway, probably, yeah. Uh, yeah. because also they feel they, that's necessary. But the older people... You know, we're talking all the people uh -huh. ready 45, which is really ridiculous, I think. But okay, all the people 45, they stay in the company another 20 years. Yeah. You know, yeah. I uh, I did um, uh, voluntary work and I was visiting a lady. She was uh, uh, 98 years old and I visit her every three weeks just because she was lonely. And uh, she told me that she left the computer behind, that she, I was with my iPhone, I wanted to make a picture so that if she calls me, I saw her picture in my screen. She never saw an iPhone. And um, and she said, yeah, when the computer came, I thought, you know, I'm too old, I, I leave that behind. And I understood. But on the other hand, I thought, okay, so you were 80 then. So I understand that when you're 80, that you think like, I'm too old. But if you stay alive until 100, she became 103. She for 20 years. Then you lose 20 years of inter interaction. Mm -hmm. And that makes me aware. I stimulate my parents, everyone, you know, go to the Apple store, get your information, go, go to these seminars everywhere where you can learn everything. Mm -hmm. And it's nothing to do with age. Maybe it takes a bit longer to learn it, but you will be earlier in applying it. Wow. Well, don't Fast. leave us hanging on that fifth insight. So fifth please, insight, uh, create a high-performance culture. I must yeah. warn, you, war, uh, warn you because this is a complicated slide. Make a picture of it. Um, just make a screenshot maybe. You can go over it later on. It's a complicated slide and And high-performing culture and leadership is complicated. So don't make it, anyone who says these are the, th the four things that you need to remember. It's nonsense. It is complicated and complex. Now, I told you already there were four leadership insights that we already discussed. This is the fifth and the last one. 
It's based on an article of Pisano. We will use that in the notes as well from the Harvard Business Culture, uh, Harvard Business Review, sorry. And the title was The Hard Truth About Innovative Cultures. He made the six pillars of inspiring cultures on your left-hand side and the foundation, the other hand. Now, what you see here is, for example, if you look at the first one, uh, no, I'll give an example of the second one. It says tolerance for failure. Everyone will recognize. I just told you already, like throw them into the water, let people make mistakes. Perfect. I agree. This is what you always, if you look at this, listen, uh, at this list, willingness to experiment, tolerance for failure, psychological safety, collaboration, we know this. This is what we like. If it was easy, everyone would have that in the organization. Why it's not easy? It's in the middle pillar. It's not easy because if you look at tolerance for failure, it needs to also come with intolerance for incompetence. So as long as you say, but, you know, hey, uh, you said I can make mistakes. But if you make stupid mistakes, of course, that is not what I intend. Failure should be around, we try something new, we learn something from it because we didn't know these or this, these ex aspects of this new thing. And because we learned about this failure, we can do something else better. That is different than making mistakes that you would not expect someone to do with these soft and hard skills that you intend to have for everyone in a certain role. Now, intolerance for incompetence is critical because otherwise people are failing all the time and your company is imploding. Now, we made a third pillar to this article because it might be that you will underestimate the context, how important that is for personal performance. So a systemic approach, when someone is not competent in your mind, looking at it from a systemic point of view, like could this be because the role description is with goals that are not able to reach by anyone? Is it because someone needs to work in a team that is not is failing? Could it be because the boss is not making any decision and that makes your life very hard in this role? It's important to take that into account. And with that, if you have a systemic approach to performance, if you're intolerant for incompetence, you are able to give room for tolerance for failure. So this, this is how you need to read this slide. To give you another example, flat organizational structure, something I think is very popular at the moment. Also, big corporates are looking, how can we flatten our structure? What we underestimate is the flatter the structure, the stronger leadership we need. You would think that with flattening the structure, every, you know, we say self-steering teams, everyone can make their own decisions, but we need to know where we're going. What are the boundaries? What are the core values that we need to take into account? What is our common ground? What is the product? What is our purpose? That's very important and even more important if the structure is flat. That also feels like a sort of a, yeah, an, a, a disbalance or, or it's something that are two points of, you know, other sticks, ends of the stick. And to have that really work, you need clarity on vision purpose, values, ownership. Another one that I want to highlight, and that's the last one, is for collaboration. We all know collaboration is important. Now, you know your study group probably, where there was only also always one person that does nothing. And okay, you're okay, you know, you're with two others or three that will do the job, and the third one is, uh, the fourth one is the free rider. Okay, study group. But now into a company, You get fed up with the colleague that is just always not really working together or doesn't make anything better. Even you need to put more attention to this person to get where you want to go. Very frustrating. So collaboration cannot work if you don't also take into account individual accountability. So people need to have an individual accountability to make sure that the collaboration works. And to get that done, We need to have stimulating processes, a good performance management tool. Now, 
often when we're talking about collaboration, we don't really think about that it needs to be in combination with individual accountability. I'm very happy, my time is over for now, to go into depth with you on this topic. Let me know if you want to uh, if you want to hear more about this. It's an important slide, I think. Um, just to finish off, um, we have a few uh, other things that are very important. Be super strict about non-performance. Let nobody stay into the company that is not performing well. Try to find another role in the company that they perform better. Avoid sloppiness. Feedback is key, but everyone will know that. Build your culture. And then at the end, this is the last slide. How do you, it's not only on the organizational level. I, I talked about all those five levels in this presentation and they're all important because if you do this, then you will get this steering wheel, this wheel that, that, that makes it all better. So it influences each other. This was it, Arjen. Happy. To answer Very questions. Happy. Thank you. Your best talent will leave if you don't act. And well, that is really, really, uh, yeah, a problem in this time. Yeah, can for sure imagine. Can you just give us, I mean, in this crisis happening all around us, it's not only that talent themselves are leaving. Sometimes we have, we have to force our talents to leave, unfortunately, uh, especially in times of crisis or in times of distress. What's that going to mean for, well, the purpose of these people, the perspective of your talents? They thought they were in a great company, yeah. working towards a great goal, and all of a sudden, in a crisis, everything is reshuffled. Yeah. What, what do you do then as a leader? How do you keep people motivated? And How do you keep a, a, alive, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny that you say, like, in a crisis like this, everything, like, uh, you experience that things stop. But I think if I look at you as a factory, you started this webinar series. Series. Someone asked you, while you didn't have any experience with webinars, if you wanted to, <laughs> to get into this That's new true. skill. Yeah. <laughs> so it gives you a new, uh, a, a new experience, a new challenge to learn something and to, to speak with people that you might think are inspiring. Mm -hmm. um, so I see a lot of new challenges. I think actually, especially in the field where I work in scale-ups and startups, everyone is back to the design table and think like, okay, so we're hit hard. What could we do to survive? Where are the chances? Everyone knows, you know, never waste a good crisis. We know it all. Mm -hmm. uh, but what do you actually do to not waste the crisis? And I think involving your talent and new people, but everyone in the organization, let everyone think about, let, do a brainstorm session. Where do you see chances? What do you see develop? Um, I, I listened to a lot of webinars myself and I heard an Asian person, he said, you see now where the struggle is, you know, what is the struggle at this moment? And the struggle we experience now is probably the opportunity for tomorrow. So, wow. yeah, I think there is a lot to do actually. And the best thing to do is ask your talent to think about it. Mm -hmm. And how do you pick up then as a leader? Just to yeah, go more into a practical level, we can ask our talents to think about it for themselves, of course. What can I do in personal development? But yeah. how do I get in touch? I'm I'm a I'm a say that I'm a business leader myself. How, yeah. how do I pick up on those ideas? Yeah, ask them for having lunch with you or a webinar or whatever. Go walking outside with one and a half meters, uh, you uh -huh. know, from each other. But I think, you know, um, if you're asked by a leader. If you would get them informed or share your ideas, everyone feel appreciated. You know, you feel like, wow, he wants to know what I think. First, what you're going to do is think, you know, like, oh, now I need to come up with a good answer. Mm -hmm. now, that is already the effect that you want to have. Asking the people to think about it is the, is the, is the best intervention invention you can make. Mm -hmm. uh, we, for example, we split our clients in groups how hard they were hit. And we made uh, working groups to look at what is the HR challenge those group of companies face and what could we do to serve them and to make them react quicker than other people in the same field mm -hmm. so that they move, have the first mover advantage. That's exciting. And everyone in the company could join. Everyone was expected to become part of a group and you could choose yourself if you wanted to be in the high impact group of companies that were closed 
and they had to uh, be, uh, during the lockdown down weren't open mm -hmm. and people that actually thrive because we also have clients that are even growing faster yeah. than they were before yeah. so for both there are very different uh different challenges at the moment and and interesting aspects to to look at mm -hmm. and i think even in a corporate we can you know you could organize it in in groups of clients in in on every level you can do this okay just to check your screen oh yeah <laughs> it's off because i think it's good to, um, oh yeah to... comes back thank you perfect no problem. Um, so, yeah, any questions, guys? If you have any, please send them to us. We're yeah. getting a lot of them in, so I'm just going to go through that. I'm taking a few at a time. Yeah. Ellen is asking us if you can go back to your slide on, on the, let's say, the rainbow, the systems. Yeah. yeah. Uh, first question for her is, okay, what do you mean with, with process and systems? Yeah. So it was quite fast that we were looking at this, of course, but maybe you can Indeed. just elaborate shortly on... What do I see? What, Thank what you, doing? Ellen, for the question, because I had to rush over this slide a bit. So now I get the chance to explain it a bit better. So process and systems is more that I mentioned, you know, we need to have, of course, a sort if the, the, the bigger you are, larger your company is, the more uh, room you have for ex, uh, for thinking through career paths and also thinking through what kind of learning steps do people need to make to become the best in their field. So processes and systems, I mean a good performance management system for feedback, uh, a good academy for learning the skills that you need, thinking through how you connect the dots, how you make sure that people have, for example, a mentoring program inside the organization, but I would stimulate also to have mentors outside the organization just to have a fresh view on what you experience inside the organization. So this is more our HR field, mm -hmm. like processes and systems, and I wanted to show it as number two, more to say that is not all. So most of the time in our field, we're thinking about what instruments we have as HR inside our pocket to deliver a certain added value to the company. But I think we need to broaden our view and to also interact in, on all the other different levels. Great. And I guess all the online channels add a lot to the network, the yeah. possibilities to interact. Yeah, but also, for example, like, like we have then, this is a bit promo, um, forgive me for that, but for the HR Young Meetup, we want young people to come there to mm -hmm. mingle with each other, you know, and to and we group them together to share experiences on a certain topic. Mm -hmm. We say, okay, sit together with other people from other companies and explain to each other what your experiences are on performance management or mm -hmm. on engagement or what you do in a certain area. And I think that is very important to stimulate people to do that and yeah. to uh, to help them look outside and get more connected cool i have a really nice question from julia actually as a as a follow-up so she's asking us okay so i really like the slide on high performance culture or you're mentioning all yeah. about that but what is the best example on this topic you have ever seen the example of a, 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 of a the, high performance culture a culture yeah um so you yeah, it, it's it's a it's a very good question, and I think there are different companies that show that they are good in this topic. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's very difficult to give a good example because most of the time you, we have this book that is called Good to Great, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, probably a lot of people know that the Bible for every business the, student, right? Yeah, the you, Bible. You read, but it. also if you read that, and I'm very skilled into the science because I also have the uh, Bay and Air uh, uh, Work Professor podcast where we discuss all new science on human behavior, mm -hmm. and um, science in a certain way is that we believe now this works, but that probably within three or four years we will invent new things that will get and shape a different direction in, 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 in a certain way. But I think if you look in, in the Netherlands, I think it's a good example to give, for example, Booking.com. Mm -hmm. I think in the beginning of the time of Booking, they had this culture. But in scaling, they forgot that they stayed into the six pillars of inspiring culture and they forgot the foundation and what we call the fee employee experience. So... They stayed into the willingness to experience tolerance for failure, collaboration. But if you grow into a corporate, you need to have systems and structures mm -hmm. to really get this same feeling. And it's getting more and more complicated the bigger you grow. 
hopefully this is a good answer. Well, at least yeah. I, I understand. So yeah, uh, yeah, I, I definitely and I think believe for, yeah, th there are there are many smaller companies to mention, but I think they are not too known maybe for people, so that no. it doesn't really add value. No, and I think there's also the the beauty of of communicating about this more, maybe to to share yeah. more practical examples within the HR community in yeah. those meetups or wherever we do it in podcasts, webinars, yeah. wherever. But to make us part of that, because we're having a lot of different initiatives in many different companies, and we're trying to reinvent the wheel, whereas some yeah. of them, yeah, are great examples for others that we can build upon. Yeah. So, and I think, for example, if you if you want to hear a Dutch uh, example, I think Blendel's doing a good job. So there, there, there are several inside it is good, doing a good job. There are there are more and more companies that are doing a good job. Mm -hmm. I think in 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 our field we have a few customers that are doing really really well, uh, but it's hard work, and that is I think it's not something that you establish. It needs you know attention, nurturing the whole time. Great, thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to ask you to draw up the last slide, so yeah. we're going to see that tagline. Your I should best. Ma maybe mention also Robin Radar, which is really okay. a good, uh, I think, a fantastic leader as well, and so, and they are really putting attention to this. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Um, your tagline: Your best talent leaves if you do not act. So yeah. I think this is something for us, for everyone, for leaders in the business and community around yeah. us to, to consider that this is a serious topic, something to very carefully consider and make some really good judgment on how to yeah, build your systems, but also how do you take care of this? Start small and build it out. There's yeah. no one size fits all. I think no, that's and you can I've work learned. on it. You know, you first can take one into account, just build on it easily. You know, you, you can you just, just do one step. We have also a sort of a, uh, it, it, we have the uh, we have online uh, per phase of growing where you need to pay attention so mm -hmm. that you build this culture step for st step by step. Yeah. And um, important best talent they never tell you they leave because of leadership, but they leave because of leadership. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so take that to mind, guys. I, I have to close now because of the time. I'm really sorry. I, I would have loved to talk about this for hours more, but thank I you. want to thank you very much. It's it's really been a pleasure listening to you and, and getting more to learn about your experience and your field of expertise in, in talent management and development. Thank you. Um, guys, after today, we have a short summer break. So we'll be back on 20 August. So you have to wait a bit for the next episode. Uh, we'll announce the speaker around that time. In the meantime, of course, all the webinars of the recent weeks are available on our YouTube channel. I, I cannot mention enough. And maybe you can like and subscribe. So feel free to join uh, the Effectory channel. Also, if you want to stay up to date with the latest meetings, the every, well, let's say interactional events online or offline, maybe. Who knows? In the future, we might get back to the offices. Uh, you can subscribe to our Effectory HR Lab meetup page so go and find that as well enjoy your summer wendy thank you again and yeah in whatever form possible uh take some time to relax reflect and i'm very much looking forward to see you again by mid-august bye bye <laughs>